Okay, good evening, everybody, or good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world today. Uh, my name is Liam Hughes. I'm the founder of biggerplate.com, and I am your uh, webinar presenter uh, today. Uh, we've got just a couple of minutes before the official start time, so we just thought we'd uh, fire up the session a little bit ahead of time, and ideally, uh, maybe you'll just let us know where you're joining from in the world today, uh, and ideally, you'd also just let me know that you can hear me okay uh, and see my screen okay. You should see uh, an XMind map on the screen right now. So if you could just use the chat function uh, here in Livestorm to just let me know that you can uh, see the screen and that you're hearing me okay, uh, that would just help me to make sure we're, we're good to get started at the official time in, in just a minute or so. Uh, so any chat to help there from you would be great. I can see some thumbs up coming. Uh, so I'll take that as a sign that we're doing okay so far. Uh, so always really nice to know who's on the call today, where you're joining from, uh, where in the world you are, uh, tell me how the weather is. I'm in Austin, Texas at the moment, which is warm but a bit wet, which is not quite what I was looking for. Uh, so uh, yeah, it'd be great to know where you're joining from today. I can see Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence from Brisbane. Uh, hi, Lawrence. Nice. Thank, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, anybody else? I can see we've got quite a few people coming into the session now. That's great. So please feel free to let us know where you're joining from today. Uh, and I will try to uh, just uh, say hello to people. Uh, also great to uh, just give you a little heads up if you could just try to use the uh, the questions panel specifically when you have questions about what I'm showing on the screen uh, that just helps me to divide the chat versus the Q&A uh, so if you have specific questions about what I'm talking about or what you're seeing on screen please use the questions panel uh, in Livestorm just to help me uh, focus on that and obviously use the chat uh, for anything else that you want to just uh, throw in or, or discuss with each other. So I think that brings us to eight o'clock, my time here in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, I see Pravana joining from Wellington, New Zealand. Hi, Pravana. Uh, so we've got some, some uh, Antipodean uh, 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 attendees today, which is great. So I think with that being the official time uh, to start, I'm going to jump straight into my presentation, which is, as you might have expected, in the form of an XMind map. Now, again, I'm not hearing anybody in the chat say they can't see it, so I'm going to assume you can all see this, uh, but I will just pop back to Livestorm. I've only got my laptop here, so I'll just have to pause every now and then and just come back to the Livestorm screen to just check uh, whether everything is coming through okay. So let's dive straight into our mind map here. And for those of you who are very new to mind mapping, a good principle that we always apply at Bigger Plate is to build and read our mind maps clockwise. So that's what we're going to do today. So imagine if you're looking at a clock face, we're going to start up here in the welcome, uh, which is sort of the one or two o'clock position if you're looking at a clock. And we're going to move our way clockwise around the mind map until we get around, as you might expect, to a conclusion. So let's jump in here to our quick brief welcome. So uh, my name is Liam Hughes. I'm the founder of biggerplate.com. Uh, for those of you who are interested to connect with me, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you search for Liam Hughes on Bigger Plate, uh, sorry, on LinkedIn, you should be able to find me pretty easily. Uh, and I share a lot of information and resources related to mind mapping. So if you want to follow up and, and keep improving on your mind mapping, uh, hopefully you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Let me know that you watched the webinar. Uh, and it'd be great to connect with uh, some more mind mappers around the world. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm the founder of BiggerPlate.com. BiggerPlate was established in 2008, and we have one single mission in life. That is to help people like you go further with mind mapping. Now, it's very important. I've been asked to be a speaker here by the nice uh, uh, friends of ours at XMind. XMind is a very long-term partner of BiggerPlate, but it's very important for me to just make clear BiggerPlate that's my company. We don't make software and we don't sell software. So we don't make XMind and we don't sell XMind. We are just long-term partners of XMind. We think it's a phenomenal product, uh, but just be aware that we're kind of software neutral and independent of XMind, even though we're big supporters. So if you go to biggerplate.com, what you're going to find is lots of mind mapping templates shared by people from around the world, lots of videos on how mind mapping is used in a huge range of situations, virtual events, e-learning courses, and a lot more. Mind mapping is our sole focus, and as I say, our sole purpose is to help people go further with mind mapping in whatever walk of life they are currently in. So this webinar today which I've been asked to present by our friends at XMind is it's pretty short. We've given ourselves sort of 20 to 30 minutes to present and a little bit of time for that uh, for Q&A. So I really hope you'll fire in some questions that I can try and dig into once I finish presenting. The content I'm going to talk to do uh, today is really from our online course. Uh, we have an online course at Bigger Plate, which is Strategic Planning with XMind. Uh, you can access that course. It's 10 videos long. It's a real step-by-step -step instruction on how to go through a real end-to-end -end process with XMind for strategic planning. 
So I'm really going to show you a sort of a quick version of that today just to give you a sense of what's possible. Uh, and that course, if you wanted to get access to the full course, that's included with Bigger Plate Plus membership on our site. Uh, and you can actually get a little discount on Bigger Plate uh, Plus membership if you use the code that's showing on the screen now. So if you're interested in that upgrade and accessing that course and a huge range of other resources that are included with Bigger Plate Plus membership, uh, take a screenshot of to, of the screen right now uh, and you've got a nice little discount there to help you uh, get up and running. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about strategic planning with XMind. And what does strategic planning mean? Well, we break it down into three stages and we do this uh, process ourselves. And also over many years at Bigger Plate, we've helped lots of companies to go through this process using mind mapping software like XMind to help facilitate and guide and capture the process. So what I'm going to talk through today is a very quick version of that process and just try and show you how that process evolves. And it starts with a situation mapping exercise. So we just start and think, where are we today? So we're thinking about the present. From there, we start to build out some ideas about the future, where we want to go. And once we know where we want to go, we can start action planning. How will we get there? Now, whenever I work with companies, quite often people want to start here. They want to start with action because they want to feel like they're making progress and moving things forward. But in reality, what you really need to take the time to do is pause, think about where you are today, where you want to go, and only then can you really start to action plan with accuracy. You don't want to fall into the trap of planning lots of actions and activity, but in an area that's taking you in a direction that's not where you want to go. So pausing and going through this three-step process is very simple. It can be done in you know, an hour or two by yourself or with a team, or it can be done over a process of several weeks. We've worked with clients where we've done this in a, a morning workshop. Or we've also worked with clients where we've uh, worked this over several weeks and months into a, into a fully formed plan. And mind mapping software is a great way to help you go right from the beginning all the way through to the end where you've got very specific actions and plans in place. And that's what I'm going to try and show you very, very quickly today. So before I jump into a quick demo or a quick look at the situation mapping, I'm just going to pop back to uh, Livestorm and just check in on my questions. I can see uh, hi to all of you who've uh, let me know where you're joining from today. That's great to see. Uh, just a quick reminder for anyone who's joined us just now, please feel free to pop into the chat where you're joining from today, uh, what you're using XMind for yourself, etc. Uh, but if you have any specific questions about what I'm talking about or what I'm showing you on screen, please just pop those in the specific questions panel in Livestorm. That just helps me when it comes to Q&A. Just check if there's anything specific for me to answer, whereas the chat is obviously a little bit more uh, uh, fluid, let's say. But thank you all for letting me know where you're joining from. We've got a really international group today, so that's great. Um, and I'm going to just do a quick change in what I'm sharing on my screen now. And hopefully that means I won't uh, cut myself off in just two minutes. Let me share screen. And this time we're going to say share the entire screen. Let's do that. You'll briefly see me in an infinity, and hopefully now you're seeing the map once again. So I just do that because every time I move from one map to the other, a live storm won't necessarily follow, but now it should be okay. So step one in our process was situation mapping. Where are we today? So that's really what we want to do is review our current situation. And you can do that using very simple prompts in a mind map. Now, there's lots of different prompts you might use uh, depending on what kind of analysis you're doing. But really what we're trying to do is, is use simple prompts in a mind map that are understandable to everyone and accessible to everyone. If you want to involve a team in the strategic thinking and planning, you want to make sure that the language you use, the terminology you use is understandable to everyone. So don't hide behind sort of business jargon or, or understandable uh, words that many people might find hard to understand. So a good example of, of accessible language and, and useful prompts is something like a SWOT analysis. Now, some of you may have done SWOT analysis before. Uh, some of you may have good or bad memories of it. But SWOT analysis fits really nicely into mind mapping. And, and software like XMind is fantastic for enabling and capturing and developing a SWOT analysis. And SWOT stands for strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And these are four very simple prompts that actually, if you give them time, can give you a really rounded view of your current situation. Again, that's our goal at the moment. So how does that actually work in reality using XMind? Well, we recommend going through a process of capturing, categorizing, and prioritizing. So that's what I'm just going to show you here in very sort of quick summary is the stages that we might go through in building our situation map. So to begin with, we'll capture. And we might start using a very simple blank mind map template uh, like this one. Now, again, I'm hoping you're going to be seeing now a different mind map, which is a blank X mind map with strengths, 
weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, depending on whether you're working by yourself or with a group, there's different ways to approach the initial capturing phase. Again, we've got a little bit more about that in our course. But for the sake of a simple example, what we might just start to do is just using the insert or return keys on your keyboard, start to uh, put ideas into the map. So perhaps we think you've got experience, maybe industry is exciting, it's a strength. Uh, maybe then we think down in weaknesses, maybe we're overloaded, maybe we've got too much work and not enough people opportunities maybe we've got new regions maybe we've got partnerships is a, an idea we just so at the moment all we're doing is just capturing ideas into the mind map now it's a good principle in mind mapping generally to just focus on one or two or three keywords what we want to avoid doing is writing big long sentences in our mind maps the minute we do this, we, we give ourselves a lot more information to handle and to manage. And once we start to develop the map, if we have topics in the map that are like this, it's going to become really difficult to actually work with the information. And it's going to hide vital information underneath too many words. So in this early capture stage, just try and capture one or two or three keywords and really just kind of think about almost building a big list in each of these four categories. Think about where we are today, what are the strengths we see, the weaknesses we see, the opportunities and the threats. Now, when I work with groups doing a sort of SWOT analysis with them, quite often what I just say to help them think about it is strengths and weaknesses tend to be quite internal facing. So they tend to be about the organization itself. Whereas threats and opportunities are quite often a little bit more external. They're about things the organization could go out and do in the world or engage in the world or threats that might impact the organization from outside. It's not a hard and fast rule, but strengths and weaknesses tend to emerge as slightly more uh, internal threats and opportunities a little bit more external. So after we do some initial capturing, what we end up with is something that might look like this, a big list of ideas and information that we've just captured very quickly, just using the sort of the basic keys of, uh, of the software, just using the insert and return. So you'll see here we've got a lot of different things, and, and it could just be that what we've done with a group is had them using post-it notes and things like this. And what we're now using the mind map to do and XMind to do is just throw that all into this structure. But of course, this as it looks today is not that useful in itself. We really want to take it much further than that and make it a lot more uh, coherent. And this is what takes us then through to this second part of the process, which is to categorize. So for years, we've been advocating at Bigger Plate for a process of capture, categorize, prioritize, and then plan. Now, what we want to do next is categorize. So we go from this big list mind map into something that we start to try and identify categories. So if we look in our strengths here, we might start to see that there's a few things here that seem to be related to people. So what we could do is create a people topic and then move, just dragging with the XMind uh, software, just dragging the relative uh, topics into the people branch. So we've got a people branch, maybe there's something about sort of our industry is, maybe it's, uh, there's a lot of energy in the sector, maybe it's attractive to investors, we've got some other ideas here. So all we're doing is categorizing our information. Now, as you do this, what we're trying to avoid is just having big long lists. So as we move things into um, our, our categories, we can start to look at, can we build any subcategories? So again, if we just moved all of this into our three categories of leadership, people and industry, maybe we can just remove a word there. We don't need position. We're talking about leadership, people and industry. Now in people, what we could start to do if I was working with a group, I'd say, well, how can we break this down a little bit more? So we might say, actually, we've got a, a people culture in the organization, which is one of uh, teamwork, uh, one of uh, creativity, and maybe we've got sort of attributes of the individual. So we might say our people have attributes of being skilled, they're experienced, uh, and they're smart. And then you start to decide whether some of these things are subtopics. And, but what we're really trying to do here is categorize and subcategorize that information. And by the time you've gone through that process and really structured the information, your initial SWOT mind map, that brainstorm of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, will start to look a little bit like this. So you'll see here we've got our people categorized into culture, skills, and attributes, a little bit like I was just showing you there. And at every point, what we're also asking ourselves is once we've captured things, can we capture any more? So if in our initial brainstorm, we came up with technical skills, what I'd want to capture in the mind map is, well, what specific technical skills are we talking about? 
okay, we're talking about field work and we're talking about lab work. So always in the mind map and X mind is a great tool for doing this. You're able to just keep building on these ideas. So your initial big list mind map, you start to categorize it and then you also capture more. You start to just look at the mind map and say, are there more things we could capture here about this particular topic? But you'll see what we've done here is categorized our weaknesses. And then under those categories, we've subcategorized our communication weaknesses are both internal and external. And then we've started to break down those external and internal differences and weaknesses. So we've captured and we've categorized. And what we've ended up with here now is a very good summary of our current situation. And if we stopped right now, that's still a pretty useful process to have gone through. But of course, what I was advocating is to move it forward even further and to prioritize those issues. So what we could do here, for example, is take our, our structured mind map, that last image I showed you, and say, well, if I was working with groups, what I like to do here is I insert a branch here saying, what's the top three? And I ask them to say item one, item two, and item three. And what I'm asking them to do there is not move a topic from here into here, because that actually can be unhelpful. What I'm saying to them is, what I want you to do is take everything from the brainstorm we've done, so I'm going to move all of this previous work into the brainstorming branch here. And I'm going to ask them to summarize in just a few key words what they think are the three most important strengths at this point in time. So they might say uh, a leadership position, a uh, strong team, perhaps, and perhaps an uh, energized industry. That's possibly how we view the strengths at this point in time. Now, the benefit of pulling out this top three is it means we can actually kind of hide everything else. So we can just use the folding up function in XMind to just hold all of that brainstorming information. We've got it easily to hand, but it's not getting in the way all the time. What we're doing here is pulling out all of the most important things into this top three. Now, if ever I do this with a group, what tends to happen is somebody will say, ah, but yes, there's also this other thing, another top item. Now, this is a dangerous game to play because the minute you start adding all of these other top priority items, your priorities lose their impact. So I really push groups and teams to just focus on a top three. And if the group wants to add something else into the top three, then they should take something out of the top three because we want to keep our top three as a top three. We then use things like the markers in XMind to just really make those stand out. And I also encourage the group to prioritize the top three in terms of one, two, three. So for example, they might say actually our strong team is what created our leadership position. So our strong team is priority one, our leadership position is priority two, and that is really beneficial in an energized industry to be viewed as the leader. So this prioritization of all the information you've captured in your mind map means that by the time you finish the prioritizing phase, you end up with a situation analysis map still based on that same SWOT brainstorm that's gonna look a little bit like this. Now, what we've done here is in each of these categories, we've put all of the thinking and that initial work into this brainstorming uh, area. So it's out of the way, but it's easy to access if we want to revisit and review any of the ideas we captured. But what we've now got is a really good summary of how we view our situation at this point in time. We've got our top three strengths. We've got our top three weakness areas, our top three opportunity areas, and our top three threats. Now, this prioritization is really important in terms of focusing what happens next. Remember I said earlier, risk we run is going straight into actions and task planning. Well, what if we went off and planned lots of actions and tasks in areas that are nothing to do with this top three or this top three or this top three or this top three? Well, the risk is we've identified our strategic priorities here, but we've set up a lot of actions that have no relationship to them. So now we've identified these priorities, we're in a much better position to start planning what we go and do next, our future state. So if we come back to our presentation map, we hopefully get a quick sense there again, just very quick run through of the, the sort of process we go through for situation mapping. And that will then lead us hopefully neatly into a look at the future. I'm just going to check quickly on um, the live storm chat and questions just before I keep sharing. Uh, good. I can see people are seeing the maps okay, so that's great. Uh, I've only got my laptop, so I can't see the questions at the same time as presenting. So thank you for the feedback, guys. Uh, that's really useful. 
Uh, again, if there's any specific questions about what I'm showing, please feel free to put those in the questions panel. Uh, but really nice to see uh, chat and activity as well. So I'll um, I'll pop back onto the screen sharing again, and we'll move into the next section of our process. So let me just see if I can close a couple of maps down. We don't need the template anymore, so we can close that one. Probably don't need somebody else. So we'll move on. So we've done our situation map. We've got now a really coherent structured summary of our current position in time. Now remember the SWOT analysis is just one technique you could use. You could do other things like pestle analysis or, or other frameworks. And importantly with the SWOT map we've created, it's really a, just a snapshot in time. It says, here's where we see things today. Now in six months time or three months time or in a year's time, that picture may look very different. And that's important because it means you can compare your, your time frames and, and what's happened. But based on the map we've created, we then want to start articulating our future state. So we're saying based on where we are today, what should our goals be? And importantly, how will we know if we've reached those goals? Now, this is where we often use a technique called the OKRs methodology, which is very popular, very well established. Uh, and what we do here is we add an OKR, OKR branch. And OKR stands for objective and key results. Now, objective is sort of your aspiration, and it may not be quite so firm and fixed. And that's why you have key results. So the aspiration, your objective is the aspiration and the key results really is your analytics. That's how you know if you've achieved your aspiration. So how might that work in our mind map? Well, let's go back to our previous map, the one we were just looking at, and let's do that OKR branch. So if we add an OKR branch in here, what we're looking for here is one objective. And I would again apply that top three thinking and say we just want maximum of three key results. Just keep in mind that if you start trying to do three objectives and each objective has three key results, you're going to end up with far too much to measure and manage. So what we want to do, just like we did with our prioritization up here, we really want to stay focused on just some essentials and a top three thinking. So from our summary of our top three strengths, we might say that our objective, if we come in here now and just sort of slightly edit this, we say our objective is um, maybe visible leadership. We want to show that we're a leader in our space. Perhaps we, we know we're a leader. Uh, we know we've got a strong team. And we now want to make it more visible to our industry that we are leading the way in our field. Now, how might we know if we've achieved that? Well, perhaps we can start to, this is our aspiration. How will we measure it? How will we, what are the analytics? So maybe we'll say uh, website traffic. Uh, maybe we're going to say increase that by 20%. So now we've given ourselves something quite measurable. That's either happened or it hasn't. Or we could also say perhaps two press articles in the industry press, for example. Or maybe we could say social following. Maybe on our social media channels, we're going to say let's increase that by 10%. So what we've done here is given ourselves some measurables. And what we can also do in the XMind software is attach this little icon to it, which is going to help us to show our progress. So as we move forward and we do our actions, we'll actually be able to track and just keep a quick summary in the mind map of have we achieved our goals or not. Maybe we review this mind map in three months and we've achieved our two press articles. We're doing uh, pretty well on our social following, but our website traffic is still not where we want to be. Now, importantly, here's another point that we should repeat. Why not prioritize these three objectives and key results as well? So use that same marker that we used above, assign them one, two, three, and say which ones are most important. Well, actually, the press articles might lead to the website traffic. And website traffic is more important to us, perhaps, than our social media. So we're going to prioritize those as one, two, and three. Now, just imagine now how much clarity we've got over where we are today and what we're going to focus on for the next period. So if we go to a more developed version of this map, we should have now a view of our SWOT picture with OKRs, objectives, and key results for each of these main areas. So you'll see here we've got uh, our, our leadership position, then our objective, greater visibility for our work, and we've got our three key results here, those measurable things that I was talking about earlier. But we've also got OKRs in these other areas. So we've identified our top three weaknesses as our staff are stretched too thin, we're lacking leadership clarity, 
and maybe our office location isn't good. So what we've established then are some objectives to restore workload balance. That's our aspiration, but how are we gonna measure that? We're gonna reduce the overtime by 10% and we're gonna hire two project managers by June. So we've started to put now some real analytics beneath our aspirations. So we're really gonna start tracking and monitoring using the XMind software how we're doing on our objectives. These are the things that take us into the future. And this is how we're gonna track our progress. Now remember, all of this is still based on that same mind map that we started with, that big list, that brainstorm in that original SWOT mind map. And all of that information is still here. So if at any point we need to jump back into the brainstorming information in order to inform or give us ideas for our objectives and key results, we've got that thinking journey all stored in the same diagram but because XMind allows us to just hide that away, it's not overwhelming us. And that means we can give ourselves these really nice kind of summary views without getting bogged down with all the information that we've come up with along the way. So we've done our a few situation mapping and we've moved through to now saying, here's where we want to move to in the future. And then what we start to do is that action mapping that some people will have been aching to do right from the beginning. But now you can do action planning, action planning rather, in a much more focused way. You're going to be planning actions in the right areas. You know your priority issues now and you've set your future goals. So now when you identify action areas, you can look for quick wins or key projects that are relevant to those priority issues and future goals. Instead of just coming up with 100 actions that are irrelevant, we're really gonna be focusing on actions that drive us towards achieving those goals. So what does our mind map start to look like there? Well, we can take our, our SWOT and OKRs map like this one, and we start to put sort of an action areas. Now you notice I put action areas in here rather than actions and that's because quite often if I'm working with groups it's not appropriate or really relevant for me to sit there and define really specific actions with them there and then but it's where as a group you may want to work either individually or in sort of subgroups afterwards on defining actions. Now I quite like to look for things like quick wins and key projects. Quick wins are things that can probably be done in the next week or two. So if we were gonna increase our social media by 10%, we might say an action within the next week is review social uh, numbers. For example, we might wanna establish what are our benchmarks? What number do we need to know? If we're gonna increase it by 10%, we need to know what it is now. Well, that's a quick win. So again, let's assign that, uh, that marker of progress so we know whether it's gone done. Key projects are things that are just longer and they may already be in progress. So key projects here, we might be looking at a, a review of our PR agency. Maybe we're not getting the industry press that we want. So we need to just review what is our PR agency doing? Now, this is a key project. There's more than one step in here. So we might say review current uh, contracts is maybe one action, uh, maybe review alternative providers is another, and maybe uh, decide uh, provider might be the third action. Now I'm just making this up as I go along here, uh, but you can see how we can just use the XMind software to very quickly build out just the headlines of these action areas we're going to take. And then if we move that along forward, where we end up is with a, a more comprehensive map that's got this whole journey all built into it. So now we've got a mind map, if we stick in our uh, strengths area here when this comes up here. My laptop running a little slow now. Okay, so here we've kind of got our end mind map, if you like, from this very quick demonstration. And what we've got now is a set of actions like we had there. We've set established benchmarks, so we want to know what's our social media following, what's our web traffic. We could, if we wanted to, break that down even further and say, let's break that down by uh, TikTok, let's say Twitter say Facebook, you know, and really start to build out the details in the mind map if we want to. But it's important to remember this might not be the best place to build out those details. This might be our sort of executive summary uh, view of the world, but actually somebody else needs to go and do that work in an Excel spreadsheet or something different. So be careful of doing, trying to go too far into it in just one mind map. But you'll see down here in key projects, we've also got a little bit more depth and detail now, including starting to use features in XMind. So for example, we said another key project to help us achieve our objectives and key results is to find more customer case studies to illustrate our leadership. And you'll see here what we're starting to use in XMind is features like the notes. And this enables us to add lots of extra detail 
in the mind map without cluttering up the surface. So every topic in the mind map can have this notes attached to it. And it's a great way of maybe copying and pasting text from an email or from websites and just adding depth and detail into the mind map without overwhelming your mind map with text. We've also used things like the notes feature. So for example, if we're going to create more customer case studies, we need to see, well, what does a case study look like? And that's where into the same mind map, we just attach a document. So we can say, uh, trying to open that attachment, it's a PDF, I suspect. So we just pop open and it says, okay, here's an example of what a case study looks like in our business. And we've also got here a little hyperlink signal. So XMind is telling us there's a link here to another website. And if I hit that, button, it's going to pop open whatever uh, website I want to go to. So here I've saved a link to the XMind features page. So you can see very quickly that XMind has gone from being this initial brainstorm to being this really comprehensive uh, schematic and, and view really of a lot of depth and detail. So just a couple of things before I leave this map. You'll see that I've kept this top three right at the top, and then I've actually put the OKRs and then the actions underneath it, but I've kept brainstorming right at the bottom. Well, that's partly because what I really want people to do if they come and look at this mind map is to know the current position is the top three strengths, top three weaknesses. And then they start to think about, well, what are we going to do about it? So they go to this next. So we're thinking top to bottom, and really probably the least important information as we go forward is this stuff in the brainstorm. It's, it's maybe the rough early stage thinking, the things that maybe weren't that important after all. But importantly, it's there as a record if people want to look at it. So we've got all of this now in one mind map using XMind and really just using the core features of the XMind software, we've built up a hugely powerful summary of a very complex situation. I focus mainly in the strengths area here just to keep the, the thread coherent, but in every area of this mind map, you've identified objectives, key results, actions that can be done in a week or two, actions that need to be in key projects, all in the same mind map. So what we've done there in XMind, and hopefully what I've been able to demonstrate very quickly, is move through from a very basic, simple prompts on strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which was your where are we today, We've then used the OKRs methodology as just one example of kind of goal setting to identify where do we want to get to. And then we started to build those action areas into our mind map. So one mind map has helped us go from an initial big brainstorm right the way through to quite specific action planning. And that same principle works whether you're doing a, a strategic planning as by yourself as an individual or strategic planning with a group. As I said at the beginning, we do this process ourselves internally at Bigger Plate, sometimes in an afternoon or a morning. But we also do this with clients and sometimes that will take several sessions of several hours. It depends how much depth and detail you need or want to go into. So to just wrap up before I come to questions, just to repeat our process, we situation map. So we look at where are we today? And today I just use the illustration of a swap, but you could use different frameworks to prompt that initial brainstorming. Then we look at the future. We said, where do we want to go? Again, I use the example of OKRs. You could use a different goal setting methodology. The principles will be the same. We looked at the objectives and key results, but you could look at uh, SMART goals or any other framework you like. And then we went for action planning. We said, how are we going to get to this future state that we want to get to? We looked at quick wins and key projects. The strategic cycle, how often do you repeat that process? Well, you should always start from blank templates, so don't use the previous map. So if you're going to repeat this every three or six months, don't start by opening up the previous map because that's really just going to anchor you in what you said three or six months ago. You need to be open-minded and you need to almost start with a focus on the present again. So I'm often asked, how often do we repeat it and do we just build on the same map? My answer is no. Always start from blank templates. You can repeat the same process, but you want to start it from blank every time. The only time I'd really look at those previous maps is when you feel you've finished your current mapping situation. So for example, once you've got to the process of having this level of, of comprehensive map at the end, you might then look at the maps that you created last time and say, okay, is there anything that we said last time that we've missed out? So finally, just again to remind you, this has been a very quick run through of content that we'd go into much more depth and detail in our online course at Bigger Plate, Strategic Planning with XMind. It's 10 videos and it's much more step by step. And again, as I said earlier, that's included with our Bigger Plate Plus membership. Uh, and that's something you can get a little discount on there for joining this webinar. So I'm just going to briefly stop sharing uh, the map. I'm going to just close some of these uh, other maps and come back to live storm hopefully where I can see you um, and then share just that last final map just so we had something to look at
apart from my face. Okay, so just coming back then to Livestorm. So I'm going to leave that on the screen there and just pause to look for any uh, questions, any um, any chat questions that I can pick up on just with the time we've got. Um, Rosalie says, I'd like to... Ooh, there's a button here that says I can start to live answer. Okay, so Liam Hughes is trying to live answer this question. Uh, I'd like to know how to organize XMind files. I have lots of mind mapping files, but sometimes I find it hard to find some maps I have made among all of them. So I, I think, Rosalie, my, my sense around files and folders is that's less of a mind mapping challenge it's more of a files and folders challenge. Uh, why I think you could perhaps use XMind to help you figure out how you want to structure your files and folders would be to actually use uh, the software to sort of map out the, uh, the files and folders hierarchy. So it's not really a mind mapping challenge, but it's a good way of thinking about it. So for example, you might divide your folders into uh, maybe clients or projects. You might divide it into home and uh, home and work. Now, the important point with this is if you do this in a mind map, you do some thinking in the mind map, it saves you from moving all your files and folders around first. So do the thinking in the mind map and then go to your files and folders because the challenge you have with too many X mind maps is probably the same challenge you might have with Word documents or PowerPoint slides. It's not really a mind mapping or X mind. It's more about file and folder hierarchy and structure. And that's probably something that can be helped with just mapping out that structure uh, again in something like XMind. So I hope that's a somewhat useful question. Um, archive and access, cascading mind maps for projects and project clusters over time. That's an interesting question, John. Uh, I probably won't have too much time to get into that one, but uh, the question is how to archive and access cascading mind maps for projects and clusters over time. Well, one of the most important functions that you'll see I was using a little bit during, well, quite a lot actually during our, our presentation here was the hyperlinking and attachment. So uh, as I was going through the presentation, you'll see when I was doing my demonstration, I was clicking on this little icon here, and that was jumping me over to my sort of demonstration maps. Now, I'm not gonna click them now because the screen sharing won't show it, but every one of these icons was taking me to a different file. So these are files stored locally on my computer, and what XMind is doing here is just giving me a little visual signal to say, hey Liam, you've got a link to a file here, different to our link to a website. It's got a little different symbol there. So to answer your, or try and answer your question, John, around uh, cascading mind maps, that's where I would be saying to you as you create a project map one and then two and then three and then four, if they are connected, they should be in the same folder structure, back to our earlier question, but also you can connect the maps up using these links. So for example, if I go into our, our questions map, uh, so let's say we, we want to link uh, project maps. You could say maybe you're on current version. Uh, maybe that's maybe 1.5 previous versions. And you could even just create a, a, a section in your map that says 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, whatever it needs to be. Again, I don't know enough about your situation to know. So let's say we're in current version. This is our, our current version map. But what we want to do is just have a little branch in our XMind map that gives us quick access to these previous versions. And that's where this function is so helpful. It just takes us very quickly to the file. So we don't need to go hunting in folder structures. So for example, we might say, let's attach, or sorry, insert a link to that file on our computer. So if I open up, here's my desktop or my kind of computer. So let's say I want to link to, uh, that's maybe my project 1.4, same principle again, I could link to uh, the other file, which is project version number 1.3. And that just means we can kind of connect them together and, and quickly jump to those previous versions if it helps. You could also, by the way, use that attachments feature if you wanted to insert the, the previous version as an attachment instead, and again, uh, you can add that in and it's just going to sort of open up. That's uh, maybe quite useful if you're sending the, the map to others. You want to sort of wrap up every, all these different documents into the map as you send it. Uh, so you attach them instead of linking. Hope that answers your question, John. As I say, I'm always trying to just give some quick pointers without too much context. So I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, information. Uh, Normal, thank you for your question. Normal says, what kind of hyperlinking are you using to navigate between maps? Um, hopefully that's what I've just illustrated there is I'm just using the basic hyperlinking uh, that's built in XMind. So to just come back and maybe just do that a little bit slower. Hyperlinking is great. It enables you to link to websites and files uh, and even folders, I believe. So for example, if I wanted to insert a link to uh, a website, I could say let's link 
to a web page and I can say, wait for the dialogue and say, let's link to www.biggerplate.com. And when I say insert that, X1 just saves that into the map. And if I click that, it's going to take me straight to the website. Really, really handy, particularly if you save kind of deeper links, you know, where these long strings. So instead of just saving biggerplate.com, it might be a really specific page on biggerplate that I want to jump to. And I don't have to go looking for it every time. So saving links to websites is very useful. Saving links to files, I've kind of shown you, but it's also worth saying you can also link to, sorry, you can also link to topics. And this is a really great feature when I start to get quite big. So you can actually link to a topic within the mind map. And this is really good, as I say, when the map starts to get quite big, we might just want to draw a quick little symbol here that says, don't forget there's something else in the mind map that you've already covered. And if I click that, it's just going to jump me across to that other part of the map. Now, I'm still in the same mind map here, but you'll see it's just jumped me across to the other location. So that could be really helpful in showing where there's connections between information, but you maybe don't want to go too far in terms of drawing these kind of relationship lines everywhere, because if you have too many of these, it can start to actually create a bit of clutter. So using that hyperlinking to a topic can be a really nice way of keeping your mind maps nice and clear but also highlighting those connections between uh, information and ideas in the mind map. So hoping uh, that gave you a little bit of a, a clue on there. Uh, so I'm just going to say that. Uh, in terms of running that exercise, uh, the second part of that question with multiple participants, local and remote, uh, that's a bit more of an evolved question that depends on sort of technology access and all the rest. So uh, I might have to try and pick that one up offline if there's, uh, if there's something else there. Uh, Pavaya, can you show... Uh, can you please show how the big list is added with the icon? I'm not quite sure I understand that question, Bavada. So if you maybe want to give me a little bit more information, I can maybe try and uh, uh, explain that. Uh, big list is added with the icons. So just to quickly have a look at icons. Uh, again, I'm not sure how to answer the question because I'm not quite get it. But let's say I wanted to mark something as a priority uh, and a progress. What I can do is come up here into XMind and use markers. So they use the term markers in XMind. Some software would say icons. XMind says marker. And a marker, we can just say, let's add the markers. We can add multiple markers to any uh, topic. I'd advise you to be kind of careful in adding too many. Otherwise, it actually starts to kind of be counterproductive. I tend to say if we can show in a, a topic the priority, the progress, and the person, that's really helpful when it comes to action planning. So here we've identified the priority. and We've identified the progress. And if I just click on that icon, you'll see I can uh, progress that icon to give us a more up-to-date view. I can also click that and just change the priority. So icons are a really, really nice, useful way uh, to, to add that sort of visual uh, reference to information a little bit different to images or as they're called in x mind stickers that's what you can see here on the the main topics i really like the x mind stickers uh, those are accessed slightly differently those are a bit more sort of uh, decorative i suppose so you could say insert and then say a sticker and so we're just looking for maybe something that that illustrates that point and again once it's into the topic we can also just start to edit it we can move around the size a little bit uh, but really nice ways to add some of that kind of visual information and also make certain information stand out a little bit more like these priorities and this progress. Uh, so I'm not sure if that totally answered your question there because I wasn't quite clear on the question itself, uh, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, something to, to play with. So I think that's bringing us towards the end of our time. I'm just going to check in the chat to see if there's anything else. Uh, at the beginning of the presentation while brainstorming, there were nodes with a big list to expand into. Um, I don't think I'm going to jump back to that, Pavana, because I'm still not quite sure what I'd be showing. But please uh, do let me know. Uh, feel free to contact me uh, via LinkedIn if you want to connect there, and, and I'm happy to try and pick up some of these questions. Um, I'm hoping I've answered as many questions as I can. Uh, Thank you. Lawrence says, I've articulated excellent. That's great. Thank you, Lawrence. I appreciate that feedback um, and agree with the keywords. Yeah, if you're mind mapping, try and stick to those keywords. So you'll see in this section of the mind map that's on the screen, I've got a few more than three words, but a general principle is to try and reduce things so they're, they're just a few essential keywords. And that just makes the information and the ideas in the mind map much, much easier to work with and avoids kind of overwhelming yourself with, with too much information at any given time. So I think that looks like uh, all the questions I can answer at the moment. Uh, but as I said, if you uh, want to um, 
follow up with me, please do connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll be very happy to connect there. Uh, we do help uh, people in lots of different ways, uh, as I said earlier, to go further with mind mapping. Uh, XMind is one of our favorite products, so we'll be very happy to, to try and show you what we think is possible with the course, uh, sorry, with the software. Uh, and as I said there, there's still that offer on the page there if you want to come and become part of Bigger Plate. We have a community of 250,000 members worldwide uh, and lots of really nice resources to help you go further with your mind mapping. So thank you all very, very much for joining me. Thank you to XMind for inviting me and Stacy for setting this up. Thank you for inviting me to come and uh, share a very quick view with you of uh, strategic planning with XMind. I hope it's been useful uh, and I hope that uh, some of you will be uh, connecting with me soon and, and I'd love to learn what you're trying to do or currently doing with mind mapping software. So uh, thank you all very, very much. I'll have to look to Stacy to show me how to uh, close off the presentation. Um, but I, for now, will move myself, I think, uh, off and hopefully leave Stacy with uh, picking up everything after that. Uh, there we go. Thank you, everyone, for watching.